Now that we looked at deviations way of computing averages, let's also look at another concept which is called weighted averages. So what are weighted averages? When there are two groups and the average of each of these groups are given, right? if you have to find the overall average, if you are going to just take the average of averages, that is going to give you a wrong answer because you need to consider the number of people or number of elements in these groups as well. So let's take an example to understand this further. Right? Let's say there are two classes, class A and class B. Right? So class A right, has let's say 60 students and class B has 90 students. Now class A the average score in let's say biology exam right, by class A so is 45 and the average score by class B in biology exam is let's say 60 marks out of 100. Now if you have to know the overall biology score right, of both class A and class B the overall average now how do we compute it? So obviously the, the usual way of doing it is total marks scored by number of students. Say that's how you need to do. So you need to calculate the individual marks scored. So there are 60 students. Right? This is percentage. So 60 students, each of them scored 45 marks or the average of 60 students is 45 marks. And then 90 students scored 60 marks divided by total number of students is going to be equal to 150. So this is how weighted averages are computed usually. But then like we already said, we, we have a different way of doing it. We have deviations method, right? So what is this? Again, see this is the same as, this is the same as, uh, if they, let's say class A, 60 students have 45 percentage. Now, can I assume that everyone has 45 percentage? Right, because there is no other information given, right? So even if everyone has 45 percent, the average will also be 45 percent. So for now, for convenience purposes, let's assume that everyone has 45 percent. Similarly, in class B, I will assume that everyone has 60 percent. Now, if the so let's let's look at it this way, right? Let's look at the same deviations method here. If the average is 45 percent, right? So you, you may remember the chocolates thing, right? So these 60 students, they already have 45. These 90 students also have 45 but these 90 students have 15 extra so what is that extra thing it is 90 into 15 that is the extra thing that has to be distributed amongst 150 people so this is a much more easier way of doing it right i just need to add so 54 is the answer so what did we do we use the same deviation so it's just that in this case right there are many items for one value. So you need to, so here I am looking at 150 items in total, 60 items had 45 chocolates each, 90 items had 60 chocolates each, had I, had I assumed 45 chocolates as the average, then these 90 people would have had an extra of 15 chocolates. So those 15 chocolates, the 90 into 15 chocolates should be distributed equally amongst 150 people. So I do this, I get the answer as 54. Now, why should I do this computation, right, instead of this, right, this is a much easier approach, isn't it? For example, let's say I had the 12th total, right, of class A is 845 and the 12th total of class B is 860. Now, now imagine how difficult this computation is going to become, right, so this will become 60 into 845, this will become 90 into 860. Right? So now this is a much more difficult. So even in the previous case, it was slightly easier. This is a much more difficult computation to perform. But for us, it is going to be the same. Right? I will take 845 chocolates as the average to start with. Now these 90 people will have 15 chocolates extra. So I need to distribute a 9 chocolate each to all 150 students to make it even. So 845 plus 9, 854 will be the total. Right? So this is a very simple way of understanding weighted averages which is the same as deviations method. Now let's look at one more right so now see the the beauty of mathematics is right it's just not max right so every scientific science concept is related to max be it physics chemistry there are a lot of other things which are related to max. Now let's look at one other way of representing this and intuitively understanding this right so in, in weighted averages it's slightly confusing because one value has multiple items in it so which means that there is a weight for each of these averages. So this is, this is slightly confusing. So if I pictorially represent it, it will be much more easier for you to understand, isn't it? So let's look at one more method. So I call it seesaw method, right, of understanding weighted averages. So th that is where the concept of weight, right? So what is weighted averages? So basically one class scored 60 marks and another class scored 80 marks. So this class has 
50 students, right? Which means that this is the weight, right? 50 is the weight assigned to this particular class. Another class has 100 students. That is the weight assigned to, right, uh, this class. So, will the average be 70? Obviously, the average will not be 70 because more number of students have 80, right? So, the average should be moving towards 80. This is something which you intuitively understand. You will understand it even better once we start representing it in the form of a seesaw, right? So, what is a seesaw? Most of you would have so balance seesaw you can you can relate it to anything but i i prefer a seesaw because it is easier for me to draw right so let me draw a seesaw right i have a this thing see, a rod right which has two pans on either side or two seats on either side and there is going to be a pivot exactly in the center so this is going to be a seesaw right so people try to they play in the seesaw by different when, when there are different weights placed here right, then the seesaw is going to be out of balance now when will the seesaw be in balance that's something which you already know right so when the weight of this and weight of this is going to be equal then the seesaw is going to be in balance right? for example let's say i place 50 kilogram here and 50 kilogram here will the seesaw be in balance yes the seesaw is going to be in balance right now let's say i make it 100 kilograms I make it 100 kilograms. Now, what is happening? So, the seesaw is going to be uh, out of balance primarily because this side is going to be heavier than this side. So, so if I have to make the seesaw again come into balance, what should I do? I should obviously move the, so without changing the weights, if I have to, I can add 50 kgs here, but if, let's say I am not giving that as an option to you, then what should you do? You should necessarily move the pivot. Hey, will you move the pivot towards the lighter side or the heavier side? Intuitively, you understand that it is moved towards the heavier side, isn't it? Intuitively, because obviously, the we are we are talking about a concept which we learnt in physics called moment, right? So, moment is nothing but this weight into distance. So, basically, for the seesaw to be in balance, this weight into distance on either side should be equal. So, suppose this is W1 and this is W2, this is D1 and D2. W1 D1 should be equal to W2 D2 for the seesaw to be in balance. So that's very simple, right? For example, have you tried pulling a door, right? So why is the door handle always towards the edge of the door? It's always away from the pivot, right? A door which is pivoted, the door handle is always the farthest from the pivot. Why is that? Because when I apply least effort itself, because of the distance there, the distance gets multiplied to that and the effort will also get multiplied. Imagine you placing the handle closer to the pivot. Then you need to put in so much efforts in order to pull it. So, max physics etc etc is connected only. So, how is this applicable to what we were discussing so far? It is fairly simple. The problem which we are, let's say, we will take a problem and we will solve it, right? So, that we will understand this better. Right? So, we have, we had this, right? 45 was the mark scored by one class and 60 was the mark scored by another class. Right? So, we had 50 students here and we have, let's say, 100 students here. Right? Or, or to make it, so the, to compare it to the same problem which we discussed earlier, let me make it 60 students and 90 students. Now, see, this is very, very similar to the seesaw, right? So, what are the weights? The number of students are going to be the weight. So, this is going to be 60 students. This is going to be 90 students. Now, we already saw that W1 D1 is equal to W2 D2, which means that W1 by W2 is equal to D2 by D1. So, if the ratio of the weights, in this case, the ratio of the weights is 2 is to 3, 60 is to 90, 2 is to 3, then the ratio of the distances should be 3 is to 2 for the seesaw to be in balance. It's fairly simple. The ratio of distances should be 3 is to 2. Now, I already have the weights which is 2 is to 3. Now, the distance, the total distance, so this, this point is 45 marks. This point is 60 marks. The total distance is 15 units here. So, I need to divide it in the ratio of 3 is to 2. So, I will have it as 9 and 6. There are 15 units, right? 45 and 60. There is a total of 15 units here. If I have to divide it in the ratio of 3 is to 2, why 3 is to 2? Because the ratio of weights is going to be equal to 2 is to 3. I just inverted. We already saw that, right? This 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 thing, right? W1 W by W2 equal to D2 by D1. So, I just inverted. So, this will be 60. This will be, sorry, this will be 90 and that will be 60. So, 9 and 6. So, the answer should be 
it, see the answer is lying obviously between 45 and 60 i can either add 9 to 45 and get the answer as 54 or i can subtract 6 from 60 and get the answer as 54 so 54 will be the answer for the same question what did we do we never did anything complicated we we just sim- assumed it as a uh, mapped it in a simple seesaw and we were able to solve it now tell me this will this change if the distance changes 1945 1960 definitely it is not going to change right i can change this ratio of weights into so definitely it will change the 19 will be added to the so this will become 1954 so the distance is going to be the same right i am removing the absolute number i am worried only about the differences here similarly if i change it to uh, let's say so this this had a 60 and 90 students right so i i as long as i don't change so 600 900 right so as long as i don't change the ratio the weighted average is again not going to change even if i change the numbers then i just need to find the ratio and then invert the ratio and find the distances and then i'll get the answer very very quickly